Howdy. Today we're going to talk about the international crystallographic tables. Uh, and this is basically your cheat sheet or your guide to everything that we've done so far in symmetry uh, and in plane groups. And we're going to see them again when we get to space groups. Uh, and my goal with this lecture is to get you to understand how to uh, interpret um, the information that is presented in the tables and how to use it to solve problems. So uh, as we walk through, we're gonna we're gonna take an example um, from one of the plane groups, uh, and I'll upload this to uh, Canvas as well, uh, just the PDF file. Uh, but this is the whole thing, and we're gonna kind of walk through it step by step. Uh, and it has everything: it has names, it has the symmetry elements, it has the general positions, um, it has a whole bunch of other information that, you know, in some cases can be really useful and in some cases probably a little bit more complicated than we really need to know so far. Uh, we're gonna look at the top half first, this top red box. Uh, and again, just kind of go through step by step. So the stuff that you see up in the upper left-hand corner is just the name of the plane group. Um, of course, things have to be complicated, so there's more than one name. Um, there's something called the Herman McGinn uh, nomenclature, and we saw this a little bit in class the other day. Um, in this case, C means a centered lattice. And so this is a lattice that has a lattice point on the corners, oops, uh, as well as in the middle uh, of the uh, of the unit cell. Uh, An M means that it's a center lattice that started off with a mirror plane. So we see a bold line up here. And those two things, having a center lattice and having a mirrored plane, um, interact and give rise to all of the other symmetry elements that we see here. But the top left horn hand corner is just the name. Um, the middle is the sort of long form notation uh, for the name. The, the thing above that is sort of a short abbreviated version. Um, when you see these, just you know, this is something just for your um, background information. Again, that first letter, this C, is either C for a centered lattice or P for a primitive lattice. Uh, and then each of these numbers corresponds to uh, symmetry elements that are associated with the different axes. And so these could be either mirror planes or they could be glide planes or they could be rotation axes. And because the only thing we start off here with is a mirror plane, uh, that is along the second um, crystallographic axis, um, that gets an M, and the other things basically have ones because there's nothing, no special symmetry uh, associated with them. Um, so, you know, the other information uh, that we have uh, here is, um, again, uh, this, this M, this is the initial point group. So we talked about how we make plane groups, we start off with a lattice and we put some kind of point group symmetry on each lattice point. And in this case, all you start off with is that single point group M, just a single individual lone mirror plane. Uh, and the upper right-hand corner is the lattice system. Uh, if you remember, there's five different kinds of lattices in two dimension. The most general is that parallelogram or oblique lattice. In this case, the last vectors could be different lengths. And this angle can be any angle. Um, and then there are special lattices that have some restriction. And so this is an example of a rectangular lattice, which just means that that angle is 90 degrees. Um, and square lattices would have the same length. Uh, and center lattices, and I'm sorry, this the one we're looking at is a rectangular center lattice. Um, the unit cell is a rectangle, but it has a lattice point right here in the middle of the unit cell as well. Uh, the point group, remember, we get to the final thing by combining that lattice with uh, one of these different point groups. And in this case, the point group that we're using is just M, the mirror plane. Uh, so just as a reminder, if you start with that center lattice, you add a mirror plane on it, and that mirror plane goes through every lattice point. So through these last points and these last points, when you combine those things, two things with a center lattice, uh, you get the additional glide planes as well. The unit cell um, is shown in two pictures. One version has just the symmetry elements. Uh, and so remember, bold lines are mirror planes and dashed lines are glide planes. Uh, and then the image on the right 
has just the general position. So this is kind of like what we saw in the stereographic projection before for point groups. Uh, so we start off with just a single general position. And if I operate on that with the mirror plane, I get this part up here. If I translate that whole thing, I see those two points down here and there's a centered lattice point. So that gives me the ones in the middle and I can get to these just by translation as well. Um, you'll see that they show some points that are outside the unit cell, um, and that's okay. It's uh, it's sort of additional information, and sometimes it's easier to think about the points with respect to the origin rather than, you know, uh, for example, a point down here that's within the unit cell, but um, it's just a little bit more complicated to think about that way. Um, so if we think about this, again, as a general position, if I have some object, some motif, then that motif would get reflected uh, and and translated, and it would be um, operated on by that glide plane, and that would create the entire pattern within. Uh, so that's the information on the on the top half of bit. This bit, um, the next um, is telling us where the origin is located, and this is a little bit um, weird because we don't, you know, usually we're thinking about the origin in the middle, and I have a x axis and a y axis. Um, for whatever reason, the convention in um, uh, in crystallographic plane groups uh, is for the origin to be located in that upper left-hand corner, and lattice vector 1 comes down, and lattice vector 2 projects over. And so when positions are given in terms of fractional positions, um, you always have to remember that that lattice vector 1, so I can call that uh, U1, is pointing down and U2 is pointing off to the right. Uh, and we'll see that again uh, when we talk about where these things are located. Uh, but the origin is in the upper left-hand corner uh, and the asymmetric unit, again, that's that smallest area that we need to know to recreate the pattern. Um, one, you know, one hint or one reminder is to count the number of general positions within the unit cell. I see one, two, three, four of those symmetrically equivalent general positions. And so that means that the asymmetric unit has to basically be one fourth of the entire thing. Uh, and in this case, uh, they define it as X is zero to one half and Y is zero to one half. So those are fractional coordinates along U1 vector and U2 vector. Uh, and so that asymmetric unit is basically everything inside this rectangle. And if you know the pattern in here, you can recreate the pattern within the entire unit cell. Um, so here I'm just sharing that again, translation vectors one and two. Um, this is an example of uh, one motif. I have a, a, a banana. I can reflect it over, create the pattern down there. I can... I can translate it along that glide operation, um, and, and I can see that same pattern here uh, and the same thing for the bottom part. So that sort of shows you how I can just start off with that upper left-hand quarter and recreate the whole pattern. So uh, we're going to give some practice problems as we work through this, uh, and I'm going to read the question and then give you, and then I'll pause for a moment, and that would be a great point to pause the video and try and work through the problem yourself. So this is an example of a you know pretty high symmetry plane group. In this case, the red lines are meant to be my bold mirror planes, and the blue dash lines uh, are glide planes. Uh, and so the question is to propagate the general position. So draw, essentially draw the version uh, of the image to the right hand side. Where would all of those general positions be located within this pattern? So please. Pause and try and work it out yourself. Okay, I can use, you know, any combination of symmetry elements to get there. And so I'm going to first start by reflecting it across this mirror plane. And so I know I have uh, a left-handed version here. Um, and I can do a number of things, but I think the next thing I'm going to do is use this fourfold rotation in the center. And so those two get rotated 90 degrees over here. And this one would be left-handed. It gets rotated 90 degrees again. So it would end up down here. And again, I got to make sure I keep track of which one's left-handed. 
90 degrees again. This one's left-handed, 90 degrees again, and I would be back where I started. And it turns out that that is all I need to do in this particular pattern. Uh, and you can pick any other um, uh, symmetry element and kind of work through it on your own. Uh, if I use this mirror plane, for example, these two would reflect over here, and these two would reflect over here, and so it doesn't create anything new. So let's show you a nicer version of that that I haven't just done uh, with my mouse here. Um, so what is the asymmetric unit in this case? Uh, again, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be a square or a rectangle, um, and there's not, you know, there's not necessarily a unique way there are you know, you could define a couple different uh, asymmetric units here, but you know, because there's eight general positions that I need to know at least one eighth of the pattern. And so the standard uh, asymmetric unit uh, for this case uh, would essentially be everything that is inside uh, this triangle. Uh, so if I knew what was in that pattern, again, I could reflect it, rotate it, and I could recreate the entire unit cell. Um, so, for example, if I had something more complicated, let's say I have three different atoms in there, um, those atoms would be tiled around and repeated. So this is what I would see with a slightly different motif. In this case, three atoms per asymmetric unit. Okay, so let's keep moving on. Uh, we've gotten down to here. The next thing is basically just the list of all of the symmetry operations within my unit cell. Um, and so because this is a center lattice, we're going to kind of see two lists. And one list is a cent uh, associated with the lattice point at the origin. Uh, and the other list is associated with the lattice point um, uh, at the, the, uh, the exact center of the unit cell. Um, so again, you know, a reminder, when we see um, fractional coordinates, something like zero, zero, or one half, one half, that means I start at the origin and I draw one half times last vector one. Remember, last vector one comes down here, uh, plus one half times last vector two. Uh, so if I do that, um, I can... I have one half times last vector one plus one half of last vector two, and that brings me right to the origin. Um, and so, you know, you'll see all of the symmetry operations uh, that are listed, but it doesn't necessarily repeat and show symmetrically equivalent ones. So we see a one fold rotation axis. Again, this is just because of the math of, um, uh, of, of groups, uh, plane groups or point groups, you always have to have the identity operation. Um, but then we also see a mirror plane along zero comma y. And that just means it's located zero distance along lattice vector one. Or alternatively, you can just think about that um, as this plane up here. And so we know if it goes through that lattice point, it has to go through the middle. It has to go through the middle as well. We don't write the positions of all of those other mirror planes because just defining a single one is sufficient. Um, the symmetry operations that are associated with that middle point um, are uh, T one half one half. That's just the translate. That's the centering operation. And so that basically it, uh, occurs every time I have this centered lattice. Uh, and then B is the shorthand notation for a glide plane. Uh, and the, the letter B basically just means that the glide direction is along lattice vector two. If the glide, you know, if the translation component of the glide plane was along lattice vector one, it would be called an A glide. And if it was, you know, in three dimensions along lattice vector three, it would be called a C glide plane. Uh, and that's lo located at one quarter y, or a quarter of the way down last vector one, and it's all the way along that. So that's referring to this glide plane here. So again, the most important thing that you need to take away from this box is just it gives you the full list of all of the symmetry operations within uh, the unit cell. Um, oh, and here I'm 
drawing them in colors, which we can't see because I've already scribbled over it. Okay, uh, next, the generators. Remember when we were talking about groups, if you, you can just start out with a minimum set of uh, symmetry elements and they can interact and recreate all of the components in there. Uh, and that's what this list is. And so we always have the identity operation. Uh, in this case, these two are just the translation vectors. So because it's a plane group, we have to have two uh, lattice vectors that are translation vectors. Um, this next one here, T one half one half, is that centering operation. Uh, and the final thing, uh, parentheses two, is referring to this initial mirror plane. So if we just start off with those translation vectors and the identity operation and that mirror plane, we get everything else. And really, there aren't a whole lot of new things generated. The only thing that was created was that uh, glide plane. Um, but if I look at a more complicated example, this is a thing with a lot of symmetry, you know, you can list all of the different symmetry operations that are there. There's mirror planes, there's six-fold rotation axes, there's three-fold rotation axes, there's more mirror planes. Um, there's a whole lot of symmetry operations, but again, we get there from just a relatively small number of generators. And so, again, in this case, the generators are the translation vectors. Um, and this threefold and number four is a twofold and number seven is a mirror plane. And just having those few operations alone, they interact and they create new symmetry operations. And that gives you all of these other th uh, elements that are contained within this plane group. Okay, so we've gotten through the first half. Now we want to talk about the bottom half a little bit. Um, and the bottom half, the most important thing that we're going to talk about here is the Wyckoff positions. Um, and the Wyckoff positions are basically the different kinds of places that atoms could be located in this plane group. Um, and so uh, they always start off with the general position up top. Um, and they include um, special positions and a special position is just defined as you know anything where you're sitting on one of these symmetry elements on a mirror plane or on a rotation axis um, uh, so it tells you what is the multiplicity the multiplicity is just if i have one position if i have one atom that starts off at x y how many atoms total would be in the unit cell? And we already saw the general positions. If I if I go back uh, here, you know, we know if we put in one atom at just an arbitrary position x y, we're going to end up with four atoms within the unit cell. So that that's what this number four here means. Um, the other, the next one, this special position. If I start off and I put up plane any uh, an atom anywhere along the coordinates zero y then that's sitting on a mirror plane and the multiplicity is two so that's essentially what the wyckoff positions are telling you they're telling you the multiplicity if i have one atom in these positions how many total do i have in the unit cell um the the next letter is just the name and it basically it starts at a at the at the bottom and it works its way up there's only two so the the bottom one is A and the second one is B. The third thing is what symmetry element is it sitting on? So the arbitrary position here, it's not sitting on anything special. So we say it's sitting on this one fold rotation axis. Uh, and then the final thing is what, uh, you know, if I start off at some position X, Y, where are the other symmetrically equivalent atoms? Now, just to kind of show what it means to be on a general and a special position, let's let's say I start off here, but instead of here, maybe I wanted to start off a little bit closer to this axis. Remember, this axis is a mirror plane. And let's say I start off a little bit closer. So every time I scooch this position up, this one gets scooched a little bit down. This one gets scooched a little bit down, and this one gets scooched a little bit up. And when I have it, so this initial atom is sitting right on that mirror plane, you see those two uh, 
positions that used to be two separate points, they merge and they sit on top of each other. And, and that's what happens when we go from this arbitrary, you know, general position to this special position. The two are sitting on top of each other. And so the multiplicity, the total number of those sites within the unit cell is now two. I have one that's entirely in the unit cell. Half of that is in the unit cell. Half of that is in the unit cell. And that gives me a total of two. And to be on that special position, you need to be sitting somewhere along this mirror plane. And the, the coordinates of an atom somewhere along this mirror plane, they have to have zero of this lattice vector one, and they can have any amount of this lattice vector two. And so that's what this zero comma y means. Um, just as a side note, if, if we have an something, some object, some molecule or some atom that is sitting in that special position, it has to at least have the symmetry of the position it's sitting in. It could have more symmetry. So it could have, you know, a, like a triangle has a threefold rotation axis, but it has to have that mirror plane symmetry if it's sitting on the mirror plane. Otherwise, this pattern would not have um, would not have that mirror plane there. So it's no longer in that in that plane group. Um, this is a, this is an example of that. So this banana does not have a mirror plane down it. And so if I saw this pattern, it wouldn't have a mirror plane along here or here or here. And so it wouldn't actually be in this particular plane group. Okay, so let's think about it um, for a second. Let's think about this multiplicity and let's work through a multiplicity problem. And what I want you to do here is to tell me if I start off with an atom at this particular position, what is the multiplicity of that position? How many of them would I end up with? And what are the coordinates of that position? I'm going to pause and let you work through the problem. And now I'm going to work through the problem. So if you're still watching and haven't worked through it, hit pause, work through it. Um, if I start with this atom, you know, I could I could say, oh, I have a fourfold axis here. So, you know, whatever I see here, it would have to, you know, show up over in this position. And I know it would also show up over in this position. And I know it would show up over in this position. Uh, and that's absolutely true. It's a little bit easier to think about the coordinates if I just think about it in terms of operating around the origin. So if, if I say this one is x, y, and I rotate it, I would have another circle here. I'm going to extend my axis, extend my axis. I would have another one here, and I would have another one here. So if this one is x, y, this one is y, x, and it's actually y negative x. And that just means that I took whatever, you know, fractional coordinate I was along last vector two and one, and I switched the two, and I made that second one negative because it's outside the unit cell. This one up here would be negative x, negative y. And this one up here uh, would be y bar x. Um, the convention is instead of writing negative, you write y bar. Um, and that's just the way negative values are written uh, in crystallographic notation. Uh, and, and and that's it. I would only have four general positions. And so, you know, these ones aren't in the unit cell, but that's still, oops, that's still uh, how we tend to write them. So the answer is that the multiplicity is four and their positions are given by x, y, x bar, y bar, y bar, x, y, x bar, so some of the, you know, that describes these four orange points up here. And you could always um, translate a point over by one lattice vector and make it sit inside the unit cell. Um, but it's usually just easier to think about it in terms of its relationship relative to the origin. Um, so this particular plane group has a multiplicity of four for the general position. 
What about special points? Well, again, a special point has to sit on a symmetry element. Um, and uh, I think I mentioned this before, but these are not mirror planes. These are just sort of rough guides to the eye. So the only symmetry elements we have here are those twofold rotation axes, right? Twofold rotation axes, the fourfold rotation rotation axis on the origin, and uh, and the fourfold rotation axis that is sitting um, uh, that is sitting in the center of this lattice, and uh, those uh, other positions are all of the special positions. So this would be. Uh, white cloth position C. The multiplicity is down to two because each of these is on the edge of the unit cell. And so if I add up one half plus one half plus one half plus one half, that gives me two of those positions within the unit cell. Um, the next special position is the green one sitting right in the middle. There's only one of those. So the multiplicity is one. And the next one would be the fourfold rotation axis on the origin. There's only um, Again, uh, it's on the corner, so I have a quarter, uh, a quarter of each of these corners uh, is actually within the unit cell, and so if I add those all up, I get uh, a multiplicity of one. Oh, uh, okay. So yeah, just as a reminder, this first column is the multiplicity. How many of that kind of point uh, are present? The second column is the name of the Wyckoff position. The bottom one is always A, and it just works its way up, A, B, C, D. The next one is what is the symmetry element that that position is sitting on? So this one is general. It's not sitting on anything special. This one's on a two-fold rotation axis, a four-fold or a four-fold rotation axis. Uh, and then the final thing is what are the coordinates of that particular position? And in this case, those uh, those two-fold rotation axes, they're at very specific positions, one-half zero and zero one-half. Um, these four general positions are, you know, uh, if I start anywhere at some fraction and some fraction, so let's say I started at, you know, a quarter and an eighth, maybe that's about where this is, then I can figure out what all the other positions are there just based on... Um, you know, uh, x is a x is a quarter, y is an eighth, and you switch those around and you make them negative, and that can give you all of those other positions. Okay. Um, here's another reason why Wyckoff positions are helpful. If we know a point group or a space group, and we know where the atoms are sitting within that point group or that plane group or that space group then we can very quickly decipher what is the overall composition of the structure because we know how many are at one position and how many are at another position so you know one way to think about this is if i gave you this problem i said okay here's a plane group and there's a blue atom sitting here there's a yellow atom sitting there tell me what is the composition of this and you could do what we've done before. You could take it. You could say, oh, there's a threefold rotation axis. So I know I have to have a yellow atom here, a yellow atom here. You could work through all of these. You could create um, the map and draw them all. Um, but that's the hard way to do it. The easy way to do it is to say, okay, um, what is the Wyckoff position associated with each of these atoms? I see the blue one is sitting on one of these mirror planes so this this is a bold line it's a mirror plane and you know again this is lattice vector one so i'm going to call that u1 this is lattice vector two we call that u2 and so the position here is some amount down u1 and so i'm going to call that x and no amount along u2 so that's x zero and once I've decided where that is, I can look for where, you know, which of the Wyckoff positions have that um, configuration. And the best way to do this is to start at the bottom and work your way up. You know, this is a, a position, you know, some fractional coordinate. So maybe that looks like it's about um, a quarter zero to me. 
but but again that that uh quarter of the way down that that's not a you know there's nothing really special about that distance it could have been a fifth or a third um that does not match this format so i know it's not sitting on lattice uh, on wyckoff position a it does not match this format so i know it's not sitting on last position b but it matches this format and also i see that sitting on a mirror plane which is what i already said here this is sitting right on a mirror plane so what does that mean that means the blue atom is sitting in wyckoff position 3c and remember that first number is the multiplicity so the multiplicity of the blue atom is three there's three of them there the yellow atom is sitting on a general position there's no special symmetry element it's sitting on if i had to you know um, try and decide the coordinates it looks like it's about you know three quarters of the way down u1 and gosh i don't know maybe a, a fifth along u2 and i don't see I don't see that corresponding to any of these high symmetry positions. And so really that looks like it's just an arbitrary position, X comma Y. So I could go ahead and this would be the map to where all of those would be located. And I could draw them all. But all I need for this problem is that multiplicity. If it's sitting on a general position, the multiplicity is six. Um, so, you know, the full composition would be yellow six, blue three, but I could reduce that. Um, and say that the composition of this fictitious 2D material is yellow 2, blue 1. Okay, so we've talked about Wyckoff positions, but there's something that is a little bit um, missing here, because I told you the multiplicity is 4, but I only see two positions listed. And the reason that is, is because this, you know, this, this, plane group that we're working through has a centering op uh, operation. And so for every position here, you need to know where is that oriented relative to the origin and where is it oriented relative to the lattice point in the middle of the unit cell. So if I was going to write out all of the positions for this particular um, uh, for this particular site, um, I would add zero, zero to each of them. Um, and so the first one is X comma Y. The second one is X bar comma Y. And then I would add one half, one half to each of them. So X plus one half comma Y plus one half and X bar plus one half y plus one half and so after i've done that after i've you know listed all of them with respect to the origin and with respect to the centering position i now see four positions total and that checks out with that multiplicity um it, it, if we remember these for a second and we go back to uh where we sh we saw sorry, i guess we gotta go back a ways there we go, where we saw those general positions in the unit cell. You know, this one is X, Y. Uh, this one is X bar, Y. This is X plus one half, Y plus one half. And this one is X bar plus one half, Y plus one half. Um, and so those four, again, if I, if I kind of move it over, move it up, move it down, this one that looks like it's out of the unit cell, I can translate it down by one lattice vector. It gives me this one, but those are those same four general positions. Okay. Um, the next things I'm only going to just touch on briefly because uh, it's, you know, we're getting a little bit in the weeds of symmetry now. It's the idea of subgroups and supergroups. And what you need to know about that is that, you know, I can map out these different point groups or plane groups, and I can think about them as starting off with, um, you know, with something with basically no symmetry. So we always have, you know, one point group one, there's no mirror planes, there's no rotation axes. And then I can add 
symmetry operations and get to groups that have higher orders of symmetry. Um, and so this first line is saying, okay, I could add a mirror plane or I could add a two-fold rotation axis, or I could add a three-fold rotation axis. But these, these three groups have, that's all they have, mirror plane, uh, two-fold, or three-fold operation. Um, I could then add additional symmetry. Um, so, for example, if I have a mirror plane and I add a second mirror plane, um, this is a, a problem that we saw before when we were talking with point groups. If I have two perpendicular mirror planes, it automatically creates this two-fold rotation axis along the line that they intersect with. Uh, and that means that just by adding, you know, that one symmetry element that bumps me up to a group with more symmetry. Alternatively, if I started here and I removed one of those things, like let's say I removed this mirror plane, I can't just remove the mirror plane. I have to remove that two-fold rotation axis as well. And that would bring me down here to M. So a supergroup is if I started out at this level and I added an element, got to something that had that base amount of symmetry, but then a little bit more, this purple uh, group, 2MM, would be a supergroup of M. If I went the other way around, if I started off at 2MM and I removed a symmetry element, that would bring me down to M. And so M is a subgroup of 2MM. We could go the other way, though. If I start off here, and instead of removing um, removing the twofold, if I removed the rot the mirror planes, I could drop down to a different subgroup, too. Um, so, you know, these diagrams, they kind of show how the different um, symmetry groups are related. Uh, this is the one that is done for all of the, the plane point groups. So the point groups that I can put onto these two-dimensional patterns. And again, if I go up, I'm going to a higher group of symmetry. This is the order of the group, basically a, a count of how much symmetry is there. Um, and so 2MM is a supergroup of 2, or it's a supergroup of M. And that's really all you need to know about supergroups and subgroups. Uh, if I went even further, if I start off at 2MM, I could... Instead of a twofold, I could I could add a higher rotation axis, a fourfold here, that would create additional mirror planes, and that would bring me up to an even higher order of symmetry supergroup for ML. Uh, and just for fun, you know this uh, this particular plane group we worked through. Uh, this is an example of it. You also see it a lot in in different kind of brick patterns. Um, but I can very clearly see a mirror plane that goes right down the middle here. Those glide planes are a little bit harder to see, but if I start off with this scale and I shifted it up and reflected it over, it would give me this scale. And if I did that again, I would create this scale. So this is an example of the plane group CM. Uh, that's all for now. Uh, and if you have some problems, you know, go back and work through that again. I'm also going to uh, post an example video where we're just working through a bunch of these plane groups. Um, so feel free to watch that and try and work through them yourselves.